All right, so. Describe what clergy means. <clears throat> Detail the religious hierarchy during the Middle Ages and the role of religion during this time. So I think we talked about this. We finished up with this religious hierarchy and what role the Holy Roman Empire had. So the medieval church what type of, uh, you know, obviously the religion here, what kind of focus it had over all the kingdoms in Western Europe. So very similar. If you need to, you can draw a social pyramid. That's fine. Okay, this hierarchy. And uh, this time, you're going to label it with something different, something we went over yesterday. And then think about the manners, guys. Think about the manners. So where the church was within the manor, uh, maybe where all the houses, where they're positioned around the church. There you go. Are we good? Yeah? Okay. So what does clergy mean? What does that mean? Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. So we're going to talk about uh, Charlemagne here soon and how the Franks really brought a lot of protection to Europe. And specifically, that will be ruled a lot with religion, okay, really hand in hand. So yeah, you have your separate kingdoms in Western Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. And these kingdoms are all emerging. Okay, the Byzantine Empire is still somewhat there. Okay, we showed that yesterday on the map. That's really what's left over of the Roman Empire. Okay, And um, with that, the uh, Vandals, obviously the barbarians, these Germanic tribes came in and ransacked the Roman Empire and pushed them to this. Okay, so the clergy, like I said, working hand in hand with these kingdoms. Okay, this is a form of hierarchy, religious hierarchy. That the church has pretty much all say what goes on in these kingdoms. Okay, so they're maybe even a power 
what they are, a power above these kingdoms, monarchs. So, above the king, above the queen, whatever it might be. All right, so where do we start here? Where do we start? Who's at the very top of the chain? Really, go ahead. Yeah, good job. The Pope. Good. So we have to crawl up again. We have the Pope at the top. And what is his role? What is, what is he? What is the Pope in charge? Yeah, he's in charge of everything, right? He's appointed by God. Okay. So in other words, he's like God on earth in the right. Okay. And he is uh, the one really dictating what goes on. So when we talk about the Crusades, he's leading a lot of these religious holy wars all throughout Europe and the Middle East and then North Africa. Good. All right, so below the Pope is who? Who's below the Pope? Be glad. Yeah, the Cardinals, good. And describe the Cardinals real quick. Yeah, good job. So originally, obviously, the Pope needed someone second in command. He needed a little bit of help, so he appointed the Cardinals. So the Cardinals, their only role, really, is if the Pope dies or, let's say, he can't serve the kingdoms anymore, they appoint the new Pope. Really, their own job. Okay, so they're the ones that are deeming who is worthy enough to be the next lead. Okay, the next. Lead. All right, good. Who's next? Who's next. All right, below the card. I'll go ahead. Yeah, the bishops. Good job. What's their role? Um, activity ministry. Uh, okay. Uh, they're more of like a regional power. So these are the, let's just say, religious leaders that are going to these kingdoms and pretty much advising them in the will of the Pope, right? So they're in control of these regional areas. And in other words, the whole kingdom. They're advising the king, they're advising the queen of uh, what type of religious pathway, what type of religious direction they should go. Does that make sense? Okay. So they're not really infused within each one of these communities in the kingdom. They're pretty much directing the king All right, good. All right, then underneath the bishop, we have him. Go ahead, Batista. Priest. Yeah, good job. You got your priest, right? Priest. And what are their roles? The one individual service. Yeah, good, good. So yesterday I showed you banners, right? Okay, you guys remember the pictures of the banners, the diagrams? Okay, every, within every, uh, really, medieval banner, you have a church. And that church is focused right next to the building, their homes, the peasants' homes. Why? Why is it focused right next to their homes? Why does the priest get his own house? What are the priests pretty much like here in these communities? What? What? Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. So that's your teacher, right? That's the person you go to for advice. All right? That's your counselor in a way. Uh, this is the person that is really dictating what goes on in his village. Yeah, the Lord will have a say. The knight is there for protection. He has a say as well. But for the most part, the priest is the one guiding direction, guiding focus within these smaller communities and manners. All right? Okay, good, good. So the priest. And we all know what type of uh, power religion has in these manners. And they have their own house. They're pretty much like a lord in a way when it comes to their social stand. Chris, what's up? I'm just ready to say. Oh, look at you. All right, go ahead. Um, monks and nuns. Yeah, good job. So you got your monks, and then you got your nuns. And what are their rules for you? They basically live in front of the home themselves, and get to know God better, and make themselves servants. Yeah, good job. They're pretty much servants of the Lord, of religion. For the most part, they are really just transcribing texts. Okay, they're looking at some of these older texts uh, from, let's say, their Bible, their uh, you know, book of worship, and transcribing them, translating them. They're devoting their whole life to studying religion, studying, okay, and then obviously their way of life when it comes to what religion means in their community. Okay, so they're really, in other words, poor people. They're wandering place to place. They're growing their own food. Okay, they're kind of, you know, really scattered all across medieval Europe and trying to inspire people to Catholicism, Christianity at the time. So their goal is to try to spread Christianity, to transcribe texts. They're really putting and devoting their whole life to understanding religion. All right, real quick, 
I'll show you a picture of what their schedule would look like. And then we'll move on to the documentary here. No vocab for today. Okay, no vocab. All right, so this is what a nun, a pope, or sorry, a nun or a uh, monk day of life would be like. So I'll let you guys look at that for a little bit. Study over it. As you can see, it's pretty filled up with understanding and uh, religious worship. They're obviously, they're folks heavy their day on worshiping and understanding religious texts. I'll give you a minute or so, look over it, maybe study it, understand it, and we'll talk about it here. All right, so just for a quick glance, what can we see? What can we see here? What can we uh, understand about the monk's day? Remember, the monk's at the very bottom of the uh, hierarchy here. Austin, go ahead. They didn't get a lot of sleep. They didn't get a lot of sleep. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Okay, they're really diving into these uh, religious sermons, religious texts. Good, good. What else? What else? Go ahead, Augie. Yeah, what the heck? What the heck? So again, who has to grow his own food? The monk, right? They have to grow their own food for So that means, well, maybe they have a food shortage. They don't have a lot of food for themselves. But in any case, that's uh, them taking care of themselves. They're not really following along with the manner of lifestyle that we talked about yesterday. Okay, and really what we mentioned last week with that food system. What else? What else do we have? Anything else? We Go ahead, Connor. Uh, they meditate a lot. Yeah, they do. They do. Right. Again, uh, it's one of those lifestyles where they're kind of waking up sporadic throughout the day. They don't really sleep too long, obviously, like you said. Oh, sorry, Austin, like you said. And uh, for the most part, they're focusing their whole life around studying religion and being up to date on these religious scripts and even translating them. But like you said, there's not too much time for food. There's not too much time for whatever they would like. But in any case, is that a lifestyle you'd like to live? Chris? No? Parker, what about you? I'd like to live that lifestyle out here. Now, most of the kids spend at nine, waking up at two, summer schedule. Not too much sleep there. In the winter, about seven o'clock, waking up here at 2 30. Alana, do you like that schedule? No, not for you. Not for you? Okay. All right, okay, is there any questions on the monk's day? You guys understand what and how religion was so influential in the lives of the people in the Middle Ages? All right, good, good. So again, church having a huge say in the matters. So now, <clears throat> I will introduce the assignment that you work with your kingdoms tomorrow. Okay, tonight, today I just want to focus more on these medieval castles. If, uh, you know, it juts into tomorrow, that's fine. Okay, this is a pretty long documentary, but uh, that's okay. I think it's uh, I think it's something that's significant. I think it's important that you look at these castles and understand these defenses before you make your very own. All right, so that's it.